Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell and then come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Thursday, August the 3rd. Our devotions are coming from Joyce Meyer's book, Trusting God Day by Day. You can find it just about anywhere. This is an older publication. I want to say the copyright on this is 2012. So it's been around for, what, 10, 11 years? So, all right. Our devotion today is entitled, Learn to Keep Your Peace. Something I need to learn. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 is our scripture and it reads i have learned how to be content satisfied to the point where i am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state i am and of course that's from the amplified bible um i definitely need to be in this place i i would say i've improved greatly thank you jesus god has really been doing a work but this is not me all the time <laughs> i have not learned to be undisturbed or disquieted um, completely. So, Lord's still working on me. I'll just confess that. All right, let's hear how Joyce gets into this. Satan tries to cause trouble in virtually every area of our lives. He does not attack every area at one time, but eventually he gets to everything. He brings in conveniences of every kind, and it seems the right thing never happens at the right time. Problems never come when we are ready to deal with them. We may attack people in their fine. He may attack people in their finances, relationships, physical health, mind, emotions, jobs, neighborhoods, or projects. We recently invited four different men from four different parts of the country to be guests on our television show. These men were all involved in the restoration of morality in America. They were all praying for revival. Dave and I are also interested in this, very interested in this, and we wanted to impact the nation with some special programming along these lines. Two of, of the four men had major delays with their flights. One man's flight was entirely canceled and he was very late. And another sat on the runway for two and a half hours without any real explanation from the airline except that it was raining. What was Satan trying to do? He didn't want them to come at all. But if they were going to come, he wanted them to be upset when they arrived. Two guest speakers out of four having this type of trouble is more than coincidence. Satan sets us up to get us upset. <laughs> he wants to steal our peace because our power is connected to it. Think about that. Your power is connected to your internal peace, your emotions. He wants to steal our peace because our power is connected to it. I have learned that my ministry does not have much effect if I'm not ministering from a heart of peace. So I strive to stay in peace at all times. Satan tries to steal my peace and with God's help, I try to keep it. Paul said he had learned to be content, satisfied to the point where he was not disquieted or disturbed. It sounds to me as if he always kept his peace, no matter what was going on in his life. This is an example that we should seek to follow. It's, it's so vitally important to recognize the enemy's hand in his efforts. His one job, he's a liar, of course, the father of all lies, but he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So if anything is happening that's having that impact on you, you better believe the enemy is on it. Now, I'm not going to say he causes every bad thing to happen, but he can exploit the circumstance and ruffle your feathers and rattle you and push the buttons and exploit every situation that comes along. You better believe he will because he knows he's watched. He doesn't, I don't want to give him more credit than he's due. He's been around since the fall, okay? Human nature is human nature. We're kind of predictable. He also has his minions about kind of seeing and the circumstances you've gone through. He's the accuser of the brethren. So he's always accusing you of the sin and the faults you have. He's always, he's, he's there doing that. Now he can't be everywhere all at once. Sometimes things just happen because they happen, okay? But he is an opportunist 
who takes advantage of every opportunity. God is bigger than anything the enemy would do, but don't underestimate what he can do. He can't do anything unless we allow him to do it. But a lot of times we're caught unawares and giving him unwitting permission. We don't realize our choices open doors. Those open doors, he's not going to turn away from. He will jump in wherever he can. Even if it's just a toe in the door, he can wriggle from a toe to a half a foot, to a full foot, to a leg till he's in. You see what I'm saying? We have to be mindful. We have to take responsibility because our choices is what opens the door. God will not rescue us when we aren't trusting him to rescue us and we aren't living our life for him. Psalm 91, I will rescue those who love me. All those people who shake a fist at God and say, God can't exist because of all the terrible things that happen in this world. I went through this, that, and the other. Okay, well, tell me, do you love God? Because <laughs> if you love God, he promises to rescue you. Or are you just embracing a religious ideology? Religion is not relationship with God. It is a set of rules human beings have created that the enemy has exploited that has led to a lot of hurt and pain on a lot of people. Doesn't direct them to God. It drives them away from God. Religion is restrictive and it's, it's not from the Lord. So it's important for us to know that. Now, denominations, I'm not saying are bad. They're not. They've had a revelation. And I've said this in previous ones. So those of you who have seen them all, you're hearing repetition from me. But all denominations have had a revelation that was meant for the entire body of Christ. And what well-meaning, well-intentioned people have done with that revelation is build an entire denomination around their revelation. It's what they've done. And so it creates a, this is our revelation and this is from God. Yeah, it was from God, but so was theirs and so was theirs and so was theirs. God wants to get past all that muck into personal relationship with you. He wants, to, he wants to restore what he had with Adam and Eve in the garden. He walked with them in the cool of the day. They were in constant relationship with him. That's what he wants with us. So lay all that aside. Make sure that we are trusting the Lord and making every effort that we can because the enemy will do his part for sure. He's not going to lay down. We have to learn how to keep our peace. And that is one of the things, the shoes of peace. My peace I give you, not as the world gives. <laughs> John 14, we just read that the other day. Where was that? August 1st, we read it. John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give you bequeath to you. It means it's yours. Okay. So our trust in him today. How often do you let Satan steal your peace? Regardless of your circumstances, trust God to help you keep your peace. You have to know he's a God who means what he says. He doesn't lie. It's impossible. Hebrews 6, 18. It's impossible for God to lie. Numbers has another one. Um, there's quite a few Titus has a mention of it's impossible for God to lie. God doesn't, he's not a man that he would lie. God doesn't lie. The devil does. Okay. Put your trust in the one who can't lie. You can rely on him. So God is able to help you because he gives you his peace. Receive that today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this day, for these words, Father, and we know, Lord, we can be so rattled by our circumstances. Our emotions get all tangled up in it. We wind up in fear or frustration or whatever it is the enemy uses, Father. Help us to keep our peace, to recognize when the thief is there trying to rob us of the peace that you have given us, that you mention in John 14, 27. We thank you, Lord, for that peace. As we put on the shoes of peace, you help us to stand without wavering on what we know to be true in your word. We thank you, Lord, and we receive your peace today in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you, and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I do hope you decide to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell. Come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel, and <clears throat> share this if you think somebody would be blessed by it. Feel free to leave your comments or prayer requests below if you don't mind those things being public. 
I am so blessed by uh, the interactions I have with you through those comments. I try to read them. I can't always respond to them, <clears throat> but I do try to react to them. It depends. I, I do that, by the way, at the end of the day. So because <clears throat> I'm working and I've got my granddaughter with me this week, but usually I've got things going on. And so at the end of the day, when I'm relaxing is when I go in and check and look. And so if you're not getting an immediate response, that's why. Occasionally, there are times when I see the notification come in and I can just respond right away. For some reason, I just happen to be there. But anyway, come back and check out some of the other content on my channel. I do plan to do a shop with me very soon. I was yesterday I had to pop in and there's, of course, there's more new stuff. So it's really got Dollar Tree is up in their game. I can just say right now. So I'm going to be doing a shop with me really soon. God bless you guys. And I hope you have a wonderful Thursday. Bye until next time.